Hi everyone, in this video we will learn multiple regression. Already I had explained you linear regression, multiple regression. First of all, we are going to discuss what are the assumptions of multiple regression. As we understand in linear regression, simple linear regression, we have taken only one dependent variable and one independent variable. But for multiple regression, we have one dependent variable and more than one independent variable. So in this condition, we are going to apply multiple regression. But before that, I would like to share with you what are the assumptions of multiple regression and what is actually multiple regression. So this uh, piece of work I have taken, source is Wikipedia, and well defined over here. In statistics, the coefficient of multiple regression, multiple correlation, is a measure of how well a given variable can be predicted using a linear function of a set of another variables. And it is the correlation between the variables values and the best prediction that can be computed linearly from the predicted variables. So how much these independent variables could be able to explain dependent variable up to 70%, up to 80% or up to 50%. So that will define multiple regression. And here is coefficient of multiple correlation takes value between 0 to 1. Higher value indicate higher predictability of the dependent variable from the independent variables and with a value of 1 indicate that the predictions are exactly correct and value of 0 indicating that there is no linear combination of the independent variables. And uh, we can say is a better predictor than is the fixed mean of the dependent variable. So let me come to the point of uh, what are the assumptions of this multiple linear regression. These are very, very important. Then only we are going to apply multiple regression. First of all, there should be linear relationship. It means linear relationship between dependent and independent variables. How we have to check this linear relationship? We will check through scatter plot, right? We will check through scatter plot. And how we have to, second most important assumption is normal distribution across all the variables. It means lies on a regression line. How we have to check this normality? We can check through PP. That means we can call it probability plot or QQ plot. That means quintile, quintile plot, QQ plot. Third uh, most important assumption is no multicollinearity, means no high correlation between two independent variables or I mean those are the any num n number of independent variables. So there should not be any high correlation. How we have to check this multicollinearity through VIF, we can call it variance inflation factor and condition index. So how you have to check absolute value of their correlation is it should be greater than 0 0.8. It means violating assumption of multicollinearity. Then we come to the autocorrelation. Autocorrelation means uh, here is in multicollinearity means we were talking about correlation between independent variables but here is we are talking about because time series data right we have taken so in the within the that particular variable this is there is the similarity so i i had defined here is autocorrelation represent the degree of similarity between a given time series and a lagged version of itself over successive time intervals so autocorrelation measures the relationship between the variables current value and its past value right so here is autocorrelation how we have to check autocorrelation through Derwin Watson test and this test I had already explained you in my SPSS video also and uh, this test value should be between 0 to 4 but uh, value is 2 means no autocorrelation uh, but 1.5 is the best value right if your value is uh, nearby 1.5 that means there is in your data there is no uh, autocorrelation problem. Next is we will talk about uh, homocidacity of data, right? It means error term along with the regression lines are equal 
it also applies to the residual of linear regression model. So how we have to check through scatter plot of the residuals, homozygosity, right? So let me start my this Python window, Python interface. Then you can see how we have to learn multiple regression. You can see here, here, here's, this one is the multiple regression, right? This file name is I had already created multiple regression. First of all, what we have to do, we are going to import pandas as PD. Then after that, I'm going to let me delete this file because I don't want this file. Let me edit this. I don't want this cell particular. So import pandas as PD. And here is I had created one data frame. You can see here, this is the data frame. So pd.read excel multiple r.xls, this file I had called right this file is put in the same folder where i am saving this is my directory right in this directory i am saving this multiple regression file and here is in the same file this file is available so now what we have to do first of all we are going to clean the data so cleaning of the data how we have to do cleaning of the data you can see here i had created data frame 1 where is this this variable df dot drop na and this is the function I had used. So and after that, we had run. So those are the missing values and all these things. These are cleaned. After this, what I did, I had uh, split out because you can see here. Let me check. Uh, I will show you. Uh, let me use this function df1. Right. And let me print this. Right. So you can see these are number of the variables we can see here how many variables are how many how many columns are you can see form performance size and age but i don't want a form right form is just a serial number is allocated right to the forms these are the my variables performance is my in my case in my this data set performance is my dependent variable it depends on the size and age size means how bigger is the form Right. And age means how old that form that is 40 years old, 41 years old. I mean, that way size we had calculated on the basis of number of employees. More employees means bigger form, less employees means uh, smaller form. So you can see here, but I don't want this particular column. So what I will do, you can see here after cleaning this data, what I did here is I had created another variable df2 and in this df2 I had called df1. So when I had, I had already explained you when I had given double square brackets and here is I have defined I need performance, I need size, I need age. So now it will show when I had print this, you can see here that is showing only performance, size and age. Now you can see in this my file, there is no form reference, no form serial number is here. But in this file, it is here. Mm -hmm. Now what I will do, let's say now I am going to move towards the multipolarity test. So multicularity, how we have to check multicularity. So I have to check correlation. So I'm using this function correlation, df.coCORR correlation. And let me print this correlation, right? And after printing this correlation, you can see what is the correlation in between form to form. That would be one per performance to form. That is, you can see 0.02. Performance here is the size and form, right? This is negative and age and 0 0.1. So I'm sure that is very less and uh, less than 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So I'm sure there is no multicularity issue in my data set. After that, I'm going to use this linearity and normality test. And here is, you can see import C bond as SNS. And after that, SNS dot set. Style means thick. I want thick one is the color codes. That is true. And font and font underscore scale. That is true. And after that, I had created that is the variable SCT. SCT, right? So here is SNS dot pair plots. Pair plot in between DF1. I had already taken, right? And uh, then height equal to three and uh, diagram underscore kind. That would be histogram I want and kind is regression. So SCAT dot figure dot uh, subtitle 
here is a scatter plot because I had given these uh, curves as a scatter plot and uh, that would be here is what is the space that is 1.08 I had mentioned. So after running this particular function, you can see these number of the because I had not removed earlier firm. So you can see that is reflecting firm also. I had removed firm just now. So it, it is after that when you have to run so form will not reflect and the performance size you can see and age that is showing your linearity function then after that i'm going to going to, uh, to check homoscedasticity and homoscedasticity here is i have to call from stretchmodel.formula.api ols and a regression equal to I had used this argument OLS and here is performance is my you can see here performance is my dependent variable size and age is my independent variable and from which data data frame one and fit dot fit so regression dot summary so now you can see OLS regression results you can see this is the R square 0.173. And adjusted R square is 0 0.13 and F statistics 4.9 you can see and on date as well as date is also mentioned and time is also mentioned when I have run this particular function and F statistics log likelihood each and everything ADF residuals, DF model each and everything that is uh, that is uh, showing here and after this you can see standard error it is also reflecting here t value that is also reflecting here right and derwin watson that is also good i'm sure i said two is uh, acceptable 1.5 is very good but it should be between to zero to four so there is no autocorrelation problem is here because derwin watson test is uh, good skewness kurtosis is also that is under uh, the limit and after that, I'm going to going for uh, met plot, pi plot as PLT. So here is, you can see homocedasticity problem. Mm -hmm. I have to check that is the PLT dot subplots and then predictive i have divided into two parts predictive values right regression dot uh, fit here is i had used fit fitted values dot copy right and true values divided into two part that is df1 performance values dot copy and uh, after that i want to check what is the residual residual how i have to can see here Aha, right you can you can you can you can see here i can minimize this i can minimize this okay i can minimize this no so okay right so i can you can you can see here this is the my plot of homo sedasticity i when i had deducted this true value minus predicted values sns dot uh, residual plot residual predicted values and plt dot title i want to give this curve as a plot of homo sedasticity so now you can see this is my homo sedasticity so i'm sure this video would be helpful to you i'm sure this video will be uh, you have to be uh, get benefited by this video so that would be helpful to you so thank you